Wan Yang World is like my home. Four years ago, I was standing on the Wan Yang World stage as a winner of the Mary Robinson's Climate Justice Award, also as a delegate speaker on the planetary health crisis, and a new deputy director of the Wildlife Conservation Society Lao PDR program. The board, the board crash of my five-minute speech on the planetary health crisis went viral on social media platforms in Laos. I saw you brought your eyebrows together. You might be wondering, where, what is Laos, where it is? So just a little bit of geography here. You know China, right? Vietnam, yeah? Thailand, yes? Laos is right in the middle of Southeast Asia, surrounded by all this country. So to see a young professional speaking passionately about conservation issues on the world stage like one young world is a big thing for a small country, landlocked country of seven million people. It was a moment of national pride. But what was more important than the pride was the spotlight that it shined on conservation. You might be wondering, what's new about conservation? In the context of my country, Lao PDR, conservation is considered as young as I am. The country gained independence in 1975, and a decade after, it just started the scientific surveys of wildlife and the habitats. And the first set of national protected areas were established in 1993, when I just started my kindergarten. The majority of the population of Laos still rely on natural resources to feed their families. These households are typically farmers, fishers, and also reliant on traditional resources for livelihoods, income generation, and also savings for future needs. They collect traditional resources such as bamboos, mushrooms, wildlife, and aquatic resources. But the problem is the extraction of natural capital for businesses' purposes and also for economic growth is on the rise. And that's to feed the high demand of the growing export market. This includes hydropower, mining, and industrial agriculture. These are key drivers of deforestation and forest degradation. The work of conservation is therefore very essential to raise awareness of decision makers, policy makers, and also general public. As our one young world counselor, Dame Jane Goodall says, only if we understand, will we care. Only if we care, will we help. And only if we help, shall all be saved. The Wildlife Conservation Society follows this saying by boots on the ground, eyes in the field. In Laos, we are uniquely positioned to work with local communities, government, and non-government partners to achieve on-the-ground results to the benefits of both nature and people. We co-manage three existing strongholds of over 700,000 hectares with 85,000 community members living in there. That includes Nam Ad Puloi National Park in the north, the dynamic Bolikam Sai in the central, and the lowlands and wetlands in Swanakit province in the south. And we are now spreading our work further to create more 
new protected areas and support conservation rights through the Annamite mountain range, which we shared with our neighbor, Vietnam. Our programs are helping collaboration between the authorities and the local communities living in the protected area landscapes to encourage community conservation. Since the 2019 summit, my organization, WCS Laos, has grown to double in both human resources and our portfolios. I lead our work on supporting government policy reforms and also our fight against wildlife trafficking and our program that linked wildlife health and human health. When receiving the Mary Robinson Climate Justice Award back in 2019 in London, I spoke on my ongoing work to seek official recognition of the forest rangers in the national legislation. In June this year, after several years of hard work, the new protected area decree, which I was involved in the reform, was approved. This decree has achieved our dream by laying strong foundation toward ensuring that forest rangers have official status and mandate in protecting natural resources on the front lines of conservation. So I thank One Young World for the 2019 endorsement and empowerment for me to become a conservation figure. This has led to many opportunities that inspire not just me, but the next generation conservation leaders. I have two messages for you to take with you. One is please use your knowledge and network to contribute to conservation so we can address the emerging crisis, climate, biodiversity, and health. The second is to be the voice for those people and animals that might not have one. They need your protection. They need you to give them respect. Thank you.